Welcome to the Reedsville Chamber of Commerce News and View Show. I'm your host, Diane Sawyer, President and CEO of the Chamber. Today we have with us our special guest, City Manager Summer Woodard. Thank Welcome you so much. Yes. Excited to be here again. I know. I feel like sometimes it goes by and it's like it feels like it was last week. And then <laughs> other times it goes by and I'm like, feels like it's been a year. <laughs> um, so because so much happens sometimes. I tell my board all the time, I never know what week of the month to take vacation because every week standard, there's a standing something, whether mm -hmm. it's city council or chamber board meeting or chamber coffee. or And I'm like, you know, I always feel like I'm a... I'm missing out on something. Mm -hmm. And so, because so much is jam packed into a month. So when we go from month to month, so let's talk about it. It's, it's springtime. It's, it's time. It's, it's all the pollen in the air as you can <laughs> hear. Um, but there's some really cool things happening. So let's jump right in. Tell me about the, uh, let's talk about something that's been going on a while, the streetscape stuff. And then there was a second phase. Tell me about Settle Street. There was. So we're very excited. The phase of Settle Street is completed. So once we had finished the first phase of the street sta streetscape project with our um, downtown area, we looked at Settle Street as well because some of the merchants had approached us that they really wanted some assistance with removing those awnings that were, they're very dated, but they're also becoming a safety issue. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know if any of our viewers had walked down, but I mean, you could almost almost jar them loose from the sidewalk. So the merchants had reached out to the city to see, hey, what can we do to look at getting some assistance to remove these, but also maybe would, you know, could we do some type of streetscape project because that's a great entry point into our downtown area. So our public works with Josh Beck, Lindsay Tuttle, and uh, <coughs> Gary with their crews were completely able to move forward with that project, which was a really great project in that it was able to work with the merchants in getting the awnings removed for safety <coughs> concerns, but it was also an, an opportunity for the city to do a streetscape modification with some new lighting poles, with some new sidewalks, um, some planting, some bulb outs. And we're really excited to say we actually gained parking spaces again in this one. Um, so it was really great to see that come to fruition and see the great benefits of that project and go down there and look at some of the awnings the merchants have put up like it just gives that whole area a different feel and it looks more uniform for our whole downtown area. It really does give it a different feel. Um, it looks so beautiful and interestingly enough different project but kind of culminates all of it coming together. There's little bitty quilt squares hiding around the corner right there. I'm so that have been glad. Covered up. Yeah, thank you for bringing that up. So that's another project we're working on. I know we've got a great partnership with you here at the chamber to maybe look at doing some type of unveiling and ribbon cutting. So stay tuned with that. But that, if you'll notice, that's a prime example of utilizing sources like for our paint grant. Um, please reach out to our Main Street Director, Robin Yant. Um, reach out to the Chamber of Commerce, the RDC. There are grant funding opportunities available to for awnings for buildings to be repainted there's a lot of opportunities out there and if you drive by and look right there at the corner of settle that's a prime example of a building that's been repainted and you we've got some really cool quilt squares going up and we're excited i don't want to give too much away because i want you to be surprised on what's under them so yeah it's exciting i'm very happy about that so we have got so much cool stuff happening that people can see and touch and feel. Um, one of the really cool things that's happening coming up shortly is Splash Pad Grand Opening. I know. I feel like we've talked about this for a long time and it's, you know, it is truly finally here. So we're excited to work with you in the chamber for our ribbon cutting. Our ribbon cutting is Friday, May the 24th. We're very excited. I believe at noon is what we scheduled. So if you're out and about in the community, please stop by. Um, you come and enjoy to see that grand opening. But we're so excited because we are also going to be offering private reservations as well. So I know we've had a lot of people inquire with our all-inclusive park, you know, can we rent it for birthday parties? So we listened and now we're gonna be offering that for our splash pad. So if you're interested in reserving the splash pad for a birthday party, a family event, um, something for the community, please reach out to Quentin Robertson with our Parks and Rec director and work through his department to get that reserved. But 
the hours. Um, we do have our hours posted online, but we're so excited to unveil that and give everyone in the community something to do this summer with the unveiling of the splash pad. So we're very excited about that. Let's talk about cost. What does it cost to enter the splash pad? It is free. Which so is that is amazing. So our city council and our mayor were adamant um, that, you know, this is a service to provide to our community. And so it is free to the public. Um, of course, you know, there are snacks for purchase inside. And then also if you want to rent the facility, you can as well. But if you just want to go and enjoy it for the day, it's free to the public for everybody to enjoy. That's amazing. I'm so excited about it. And you're hiring for splash pad attendance right now. Yes. So any of our viewers out there, um, you got to be 16 years of age or older. So if you're looking for a summer job, if you're a high school student or a student or just someone wanting something fun to do from college or anyone, we are hiring. So again, please look at our city website, reach out to Leanne Basinger, our HR director, and she can get you in touch with the appropriate source. But we are hiring for a splash pad attendance. I may go put my office down there. I think it would be a fun summer job. I think it would be an <laughs> awesome summer. I was just thinking to myself, how can I incorporate that? <laughs> um, so that's very exciting. Speaking of hiring, you've got some other really exciting things happening. We are so excited. So I do want to take just opportunity to talk about three jobs. Um, the first one that we did kind of a reorganization for is our assistant public works director. We've never had one before, but um, Lindsey Tuttle, unfortunately, he put in such a, a valiant effort. He'd been with the city for almost 30 years and he retired. So there's just no way to replace that knowledge mm -hmm. at all. So we did a reorganization and one of the things that we're now hiring for is an assistant public works director um, to help us oversee some of these large-scale projects, specifically in our water and wastewater um, venues with some of those large-scale projects. So if you're interested, um, again, assistant public works director, that's open. Um, two other jobs that we're really excited about is our um, economic development director. So We've been had that open since March of 2023. Um, we had a couple candidates. Um, it just didn't work out that we had a, a fit um, for that position. So after some re-evaluation of that position, we- Must be on a, some real soul searching. Some <laughs> real soul searching and wondering what can we do to make this <clears throat> position more attractable what do we do? Um, and then unfortunately with the passing of one of our teammates, another position came open. So thinking through that with our team, we thought it might be best to merge two positions. So we merged the de um, development or economic development director position and the city marketing director position. So now we have one position and it is called director of marketing and economic development. So by merging those two positions, it afforded us the opportunity to create another position, which I felt and our team felt that this was something we desperately needed. This is something you and I have talked about. Oh, yeah. There just seems to be, we all wear so many hats and when businesses, whether they're businesses looking to expand, whether they're new businesses looking to locate here, or whether they're just businesses with questions about water and sewer, about zoning, who do they go to? It can be so frustrating to call City Hall, and I think this is with any local government, be like, you have to call planning and zoning. Mm. Nope, now you gotta call um, the water department, and you get passed off, and I think a lot of times that is discouraging it for is. people who, mm -hmm. you know, they've invested in their business and they need quick responses and quick answers, and they may not have time to navigate through 20 different departments. <clears throat> So with combining those two positions, the savings that we had, we're actually able to create a business development manager position as well, which we're hiring for. Which is amazing because that's going to be somebody that can hold their hand. Mm -hmm. And that's really what they need is for somebody to reach out their hand and hold their hand. And we do a lot of that at the chamber just by default, but it's very taxing mm -hmm. on our time and resources when there are other things that we're also trying to accomplish. So 
being able to work together with the city on that is going to be so amazing. Yeah, we're very excited about that. And I think that was one thing, you know, when we all did our partnership with the Place Your Bet series. Mm -hmm. And maybe that's a great segue into the next series with our Place Your Bet, something to look at in the future is we heard you. We heard that there is a disconnect. So trying to bridge that disconnect with navigating opening a business here in Reedsville, I think this position is a start to correcting that bridge and fixing that gap. So both, so all three of those positions actually, they're open now. If you're interested in applying, please reach out to our HR director, Leanne Basinger at the city of Reedsville, or look at the city website for the job posting. Those job postings are also available on the North Carolina League of Municipalities website, if you want more detail. But those jobs are open through the end of this month. Um, they close, I believe, May the 1st. So if you're interested, you know someone who's interested please encourage them to apply because I think all three of those positions will be a very rewarding position. Yeah, I think so. I think it's a great start in the right direction of all the things we've been working on and all mm -hmm. the things we try to accomplish but maybe didn't have the avenues to do mm -hmm. so. Or the staff. And I mean, that's, that's the, you know, one thing, you know, City staff, we're limited with our time and availability. Chamber, you're limited with your time and availability. And just to have that person to be able to walk those individuals through the process without them being bounced off to 10 different people. I'm hoping that'll start, uh, you know, alleviating a problem I think we've all saw. I agree a thousand percent. And I think that that is a great segue to talk about, you know, we are trying really hard to continue to work together, to work through our businesses. Got some great ideas. Um, we're hoping to be able to help the city kind of not unveil, that's not the right word, but promote and educate about the new ODU. Tell us about that process, where we are, what that looks like, why it's important. It's a very important process. Um, it is the Unified Development Ordinance. UDO. I said it. You were perfect. I meant it's, UDO. It Lord. is. It is jargon. So it is so hard to remember. That's why I always want to like focus Unified Development Ordinance because I think we get so accustomed to just rattling off and <coughs> what does it yes. mean. My but, brain. It's okay. It's Friday. <laughs> it is Friday. But one of the bigger things with that is we're hoping to have that completed by December of 2024 this year. But we've actually got our planning board meeting coming up. We've got several events coming up to talk about the UDO and where we're at with it. And the UDO is basically trying to take a document that is very dated from the mid 80s. And instead of it being in 15 different books, we've merged it into one book, one document to where it's easily available to the public. It's easy for anyone to pick it up and read. You're not looking for 10 different books to try and figure out what's going on. It's also an attempt to look at maybe some of the regulations specifically with planning and zoning, um, primarily zoning regulations that maybe the city had still been adhering to from the 80s, looking at what are other municipalities doing and what are growth factors that are <coughs> changing the way we look at zoning now and whether that's looking at planned developments, which they call PUDs, allowing that, whether it's looking at um, alcohol restrictions in a downtown area that we noticed, but it's just looking at some of those zoning restrictions and trying to find ways to make it more comparable and compatible to today's needs and wants of our community and business owners. Because what our community and business owners are wanting is different than maybe what the citizens wanted in the 80s as far as homes and businesses. Maybe you don't want a large setback. You want a smaller uh, frontage for your yard because people, they don't want that large yard for maintenance. So to be able to allow those smaller setback requirements, I think this will really propel us forward and keep us updated with what some other local municipalities are doing with their zoning ordinance. I've also been told that navigating the document will be easier. Yes. My understanding is that there will be like the footnotes or the, what's the word I'm looking for? The anchors mm -hmm. where you'll be able to click a link and it'll take you to that section in the document. And so I think that's going to be huge too, because I think while in the beginning you had hoped 
that the document would actually be smaller mm -hmm. and not as crazy. I understand it's going to be very lengthy, mm -hmm. but it's like you said, it's not going to be in 15 different places. Right. It's going to be all in one place. It's going to be comprehensive. Mm -hmm. um, I believe the word I heard this week was legally defensive. <laughs> um, and so that means that it's going to be comprehensive, but you're also going to be able to navigate it really well. Exactly. And I hear you said it's going to be accessible to the public, which means the navigation will be very important because when they can click on a link and get to a section, it's going to make a world of difference. It'll make a world of difference, and it just <clears> goes <throat> back to transparency and trying to ensure that we're being transparent with the public. In you know, if you've got a zoning question, it should be easy to where if you don't want if you don't want to make that phone call to City Hall and you just want to sit there and read through the ordinance yourself trying to make it easily accessible to where you're able to do that versus it just being a conglomerate of 10 different books. So we're hoping again, just to make it more accessible. Well, that also makes it easier for your staff to explain <laughs> and communicate and follow and not have 10 different interpretations mm -hmm. of what's happening. And I think over time, um, you know, I keep trying to take a step back and look and think about it as you all, and trying to follow and then the chamber which is kind of like a weird middle ground and then think about like the general joe blow and you know i heard a previous mayor one time say well you wouldn't go out and and start learning to drive without reading the driver's manual yes you would people do it all the time unfortunately like so we have to really while you shouldn't while you should read the manual and you should know how to do things a lot of times people's brains are wired. They just jump in feet mm -hmm. first and figure it out along the way by doing it. And so I do think that while you have to adhere to the things that the state says and the things that are your ordinances, we also can meet people where they are mm -hmm. and try to help them. Okay, I hear you. I'm excited for you. I'm glad mm -hmm. you did all this, but let's back up. And then if we follow A, B, and C, you should be golden. And mm -hmm. like, that's where we'll be. Um, and I think that's what we all want. It's, it's, you know, but also looking at what other municipalities are doing is so helpful because, you know, why reinvent the wheel? Why We say that about chambers all the mm -hmm. time. Like, why would I reinvent the wheel and spend all this time trying to figure it out? If somebody else has already figured it out and is happy to share. Uh, so I, I'm just so excited about the work that is going into it. And speaking of um, the UDO, <laughs> let me get it right this time. I'm going to start thinking about UFO. How, <laughs> how can I remember? It's a UFO flying in the air. It's the UDO. So now we're bringing it back home. And I think one of the things we can talk about is the footprint of the depot district, mm -hmm. because that's part of between social district um, and depot district and expanding the footprint of downtown. That's kind of part of what brought all of this about that and this other stuff and us hearing that people were struggling. So tell us about um, Lawsonville, the footprint of that, where we are, what the depot district looks like. Absolutely. So a couple of things um, we're really excited to talk about is with the depot district and the former Adams Electric building. So we do have that under contract um, with Mack and Company, who is looking to renovate that building to turn it into residential living and then also to turn um, the bottom space, the separate building, into some offices and workspace. So they're very excited. They're working diligently on that project. Um, the economic agreement that we have with them is it's got to be completed within five years because nothing happens overnight. We all are aware of that. But that's really starting to take some traction. And I think that'll be a really good anchor to kick off the development of the depot district. And then, you know, with tying it back to the UDO, that has taught us to look at some of the zoning that's over there in that area and some of the parking that may or may not be available in there. So those have all been things for us to look at as the city as we move forward with promoting the depot district. Lawsonville School, we actually, we've had a great partnership with the school system. Um, we're actually able to get that property. They gave that to us. Actually just signed the plat for that last week. So it's officially being recorded. So we're really excited to move forward with that. We secured some grant funding for that, for a new roof. So we're continuing to work on that, but I really think just kicking off the depot district with this anchor business starting there will hopefully encourage more growth. The other part to that with the depot district for our viewers at the city council meeting on Tuesday night, one of the thing that one of the items that city council approved was 
and actually a comprehensive uh, inventory list of our buildings in our downtown area. So we had talked about this for a little bit at our retreat back in February with City Council and our city staff has done a great job through our Main Street program in having an updated inventory list. But sometimes we've taken it as far as we can go in that, you know, sometimes businesses sell, um, sometimes we can reach out to the owner, but we may not hear back from the owner. So we thought, what can we do to try and bridge that connection and that communication gap between the city and business owners? in our Main Street District and in our <laughs> Depot District. So we have contracted with Small Town Soul, who is owned by Lenise Lane, who's worked part-time for the city under contract since around 2018, doing some of our marketing and the whole Team Reedsville concept. So we actually approved a contract with her where she's actually gonna go and do a completed inventory list for all of our downtown businesses and our depot district businesses, or buildings I should say, to see exactly what are the state of the businesses, are they vacant, are they unoccupied, are they for sale? And you know, what is you as a property owner, what can the city do? What are you looking for? Are you looking to sell? Are you looking to renovate? What can the city do to help bridge this communication gap? And sometimes I think it's really good to have that third party because sometimes people just have a mistrust in government and they don't want to talk to a government official when maybe the government official is just wanting to say, hey, what can we do to help you with your building? So having maybe that third party person, unbiased opinion to try and mend those fences and gaps to see what can we do to make you successful in our downtown area, I think will go a very long way. She's actually gonna start that project at the end of this month and it's projected to take maybe six, six to nine months to complete good, to get a true inventory list of what building inventory we have in our downtown area. It's really exciting, I think, because I think you're spot on. I think that <clears throat> there have been times where the Main Street director reached out. There have been times where council talked about mm -hmm. doing things or the city man pre previous city managers, um, the chamber. You know, we've all said, how do we, how do, we do this? Mm -hmm. And nothing that we tried to initiate really gained any traction. Mm -hmm. And... I do think having an outside person, if they will just talk to her, talk, mm -hmm. um, I think she's, it's going to be, and she's, I mean, she's great to work with. So I think she'll be super successful. Um, I really hope if she needs anything, that she'll reach out to us. I mean, we've worked with her before for y'all. So, you know, I hope if there's something that we can do to help that she'll, she'll let us know. Um, that is, you know, for me, that is one of the biggest things that I think we can continue to do is just to keep trying. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that sometimes when things don't work, it's okay. And we drop back and we punt and mm -hmm. we figure it out and we move in another direction. So um, I'm so excited to hear that so many of these great things are happening. Um, you know, we found it really important that the viewers, that the community, that the business community hears these things because we're back to the same thing. We're all on the same team. Exactly. So. Um, we had a lot of things we wanted to cover. We're running out of time. We got a few minutes left. Did we hit everything that you wanted to talk about? The only other thing I wanted us to maybe talk about was when we were talking about Main Street, let's maybe talk about, and you've been so instrumental on being part of our RDC board. And I kind of want to turn it over to you because you guys initiated this. Do you want to talk about your Main Street champion? Oh, yeah. So we, we do. We, um, we're really excited. Um, Main Street is super important mm -hmm. um and we have learned a lot of really great things from going to those conferences um and one of the things that happened several years ago now under missy matthews is that we gained our first accreditation mm -hmm. um and that is huge, huge because anytime a main street um, especially within the state of north carolina um, a chamber of commerce like anybody who is submitting their their plans, their information, their policies, whatever it is that the requirement is to be accredited and then a, a achieve that accreditation. It's huge props to those volunteers, to that person in charge. Um, and then Robin Yonk came and mm -hmm. she's been able to help us continue doing that. So first of all, kudos to the Reasonable Downtown Corporation mm -hmm. for our Main Street being accredited from the State of North Carolina program again. So um, that was huge. Um, also, we were able to both um, recognize our Main Street champion this year, 
who is none other than Dave Gerald's, mm -hmm. who has done, um, not only has he operated a really terrific business, two businesses actually, one by day <laughs> that it operates in downtown Reedsville and he, where he feeds the masses, um, but also a really great home base for his catering business mm -hmm. where um, corporate events and weddings and just all the things, Dave. Um, he's been doing it, gosh, over 20 years now, mm -hmm. I think. And so um, Dave really deserves it from that standpoint. But also Dave has been an investor in downtown. Huge. So the great thing about Dave, too, you know, he's he's nearing the end of his career and he's got these great buildings. Um, he's, you know, invested and he is able to rent to folks. But also he has started allowing purchase of his buildings, mm -hmm. which is really what we need. We need people to come in and to own. Um, I think he's even renting to people who may purchase buildings in the future. So we're just really excited about everything he has done. He's always supported everything, the events, stayed open for the events, um, and he really deserved to be recognized. Uh, the other thing that we received an award for was the all-inclusive park and the idea behind that. Um, tell us a little bit about that. I'm going to let you take the credit for that because it was a it was a huge conglomerate of multiple organizations that are both members of the chamber and some of them I'm a part of. But tell us about it. So that was a great opportunity. One of the things we actually the city um, and I was afforded the opportunity to actually we were one of the guest speakers at the Main Street Conference this year in Goldsboro. We actually had our own session breakout session where you could come and hear about the all inclusive park. And one of the things in our presentation we wanted to hit on with our all-inclusive park because we won a Main Street Award as well um, for um, outdoor activities in a downtown. And one of the things we wanted to focus on, it's so important to leverage partnerships. Leverage those partnerships, the partnership the chamber offers. Mm -hmm. Like that's a huge resource for people to be able to take advantage of all the connections that you have. So one of the things with our partners is we have a huge list of partners who we were able, able to leverage um, their partnership with. You have the Lions Club, the Kiwanis Club, uh, Reedsville Area Foundation, and then you also have uh, the Rotary Club because of their donations and their willingness to partner along with the city partnering with American Rescue Funds, we created a state-of-the-art park. It's the first park in Rockingham County that's an all-inclusive park. And to be able to be recognized on a state level is huge for Reedsville. And the reason for that is, again, leveraging those local partnerships. Absolutely. It's such a, it's such a just amazing thing to see it all come together mm -hmm. it is and something that we've been working on for a long time to continue to grow those and you have been so instrumental in encouraging your team and encouraging city hall and encouraging your staff to realize that you guys don't have to do it all by yourselves mm -hmm. and that you guys can get the support and it's just been some you took things it's kind of like i see myself and not to toot our horns but i am going to toot our horns a little bit as somebody who came along and took some great things that were already happening by our predecessors but then taking them to the next level um and i think that that is where we see eye to eye so well mm -hmm. and we're able to work together and get things done so um, i'm looking forward to the rest of 2024 and the great things to come and you guys are right in the middle we didn't discuss but right in the middle of budget sessions so it mm -hmm. is busy, busy time, and I am thankful that you gave us your time today, knowing thank that you. you have a lot going on. Thank you, and thank you for all that the Chamber of Commerce does for our community. Thank you for your partnership. Thank you for your leadership. Um, like we said the other night in City Council, um, you really, your leadership has really impacted uh, the Chamber, but the City, and we appreciate that, and that means a lot to us, so thank you for everything. Oh, thank you. We, we love doing it. We love being a part of it, and we're all part of Team Reedsville. And so we're, we're blessed and amazed at the things that are happening. So thank, thank you. you. Well, that's it for today's show. And you can always find us in the heart of downtown Reedsville at 140 South Scale Street on our social media channels and at www.reedsvillechamber.org. Thank you. Stay tuned and we'll see you soon.